When setting up a solar system or designing a solar building, you should always conduct a solar site analysis of the proposed location to find a placement with minimal shading from nearby trees and buildings. A typical goal is to minimize shading between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. throughout the year, assuming a south-facing solar panel placement. In this activity, you will learn how to conduct a solar site analysis using simple tools such as a compass, a sun angle quadrant, a solar compass rose, and a sun path chart. When professionals analyze a site for solar access, they use tools such as the Solar Pathfinder or the Solmetric SunEye. We'll teach you how to do the same analysis with tools that you can create yourself. Imagine that your class is installing a solar fountain that you created, but you are debating about where to place the solar panel so that it is not shaded during the day. Knowing that the sun's path in the sky changes throughout the day and as the seasons change, you decide to conduct a solar site analysis to figure out where the available sunlight will be throughout the year with the least amount of shading. The first step is to get your tools ready. Print out and follow instructions for setting up the sun angle quadrant and solar compass rows from solarschoolhouse.org. Next, you will create and print out a sun path chart for your location. A sun path chart is a graph that shows the path of the sun as it moves across the sky during a typical day in each month. The x-axis of the graph is the azimuth, or the direction that the sun is from the observer. North is defined to have an azimuth of 0 degrees, and south has an azimuth of 180. The y-axis is the sun's elevation, or altitude. The altitude measures the sun's height in the sky from the horizon. Each sun path chart is created for a specific location. To create a sun path chart for your location, you can go online to the University of Oregon's sun path chart program. First, enter your zip code. Then, enter the time zone for your location. Choose Local Standard Time, select Crop Azimuth Axis to fit plotted data, and Crop Elevation Axis to fit plotted data. Most of the other options you can leave as they are. Under Labeling Options, type the name of your city and choose Place Label in upper right corner. Select either PDF or PNG for the format of your chart. Then, click Create Chart. On the Sun Path Chart, the largest arc is for June 21st, the summer solstice. The smallest arc is for December 21st, the winter solstice. The lines in between each represent two months. For example, the May 21st line is also the July 21st line, since they are the same distance from the solstice on June 21st. Time of day is plotted hourly on these arcs for each hour that the sun is visible. From this chart, we can see the sun's location in the sky at a particular time of day on a typical day any given month of the year. Print out your sun path chart. You will need one copy for each option. Now you are ready to begin the site analysis. Note that you can conduct the analysis even on a cloudy day since we are mainly measuring shade obstacles and the position of the sun at the moment of your analysis is irrelevant. First, make a bird's eye sketch of the site, noting buildings, trees, and a few potential spots where the solar panel could go. Stand in the first spot where you intend to install the solar panel for your fountain. In this spot, orient the solar compass rows to north with a magnetic compass. Then correct for magnetic declination. Refer to the magnetic declination chart online for your own location. In Sebastopol, California, the magnetic declination is about 14 degrees east. We know that on the winter solstice, the sun will have the lowest arc in the sky. 
If we can put our solar panel in a place where it receives minimum shading on the winter solstice, then we know that it will receive minimum shading throughout the year. On the sun path chart, find the sun path for the winter solstice, December 21st. It will be the lowest arc on the graph. Point the solar compass rows due east. This is 90 degrees. Now measure the height of the tallest tree or building in this direction that might shade the panel. It is important to measure from the proposed height of the solar panel. For example, if we plan to mount the solar panel on a pole at about shoulder height, we will measure the height of the shading obstacles from shoulder height instead of eye level. To measure the obstacle height, hold the sun angle quadrant over the solar compass rows and point the quadrant's tube in the same direction as the compass needle. Look through the quadrant's tube to the top of the shading obstacle. Then read the altitude angle on the quadrant and mark it on the sun path chart. Remember, you should never look at the sun through the sun angle quadrant. We found the tallest shading obstacle at due east to have an altitude of 10 degrees. So we will draw a point on the sun path chart at 90 degrees over and 10 degrees up. Now, move the needle of the solar compass rows over 15 degrees to 105 and record the tallest shade obstacle there. Repeat this for every 15 degrees until reaching west at 270 degrees. Next, connect the dots on the sun path chart and shade in the area under the line you have drawn. The area under the line shows the approximate area of the sky that will be shaded at this location throughout the year. Repeat the analysis at other candidate spots for solar panel placement using a fresh sun path chart printout for each option. Time to interpret the results. Looking at the sun path chart for each option, see where there are differences in shading depending on the time of day and the month. Both of our options have four hours of sun on the winter solstice, but we choose option two for our solar panel because it has less afternoon shading throughout the year. Picking the best option can depend on your goals. Is it more important to you to have more solar power in the morning or the afternoon? This site analysis is useful for placing any small solar electric powered project such as fountains, solar cell phone chargers, and more. As you may have discovered in your previous solar explorations, solar cells work best when exposed to direct sunlight. By including this analysis in your design process, your solar system will be more likely to work well throughout the year. Mm -hmm.